Hey, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another Axie Developer Chat. Today is May 18th, 2022. Old Zyori here is on another mobile setup, and we've got a great conversation coming your way. Familiar faces, it's Zyori, it's Jiho, it's Psychout, and we're back again. Psychout, good to see you, bud. How we doing? Thanks, Andrew. Uh, can you hear me, by the way? I changed the microphone settings last minute. Is everything good? Yeah, yeah, you sound great. I have to hold my microphone for this whole broadcast because somehow I forgot to bring my microphone stand on this trip. But aside from that, I think we're in great shape, man. You sound good. Yeah, thanks. Happy to be here. Jeff, how are you? Good to see you as well. Yeah, doing well. Excited to be here. It's been a little bit since we've done one of these. So yeah, happy to be back with the crew. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we try to do these regularly and make sure that uh, the dev chats come when we actually have something to talk about. Um, you don't want to do these like every month or something like that. want to make sure that we've got uh, enough on the plate that it's worth it to do a dev chat. And I think today is going to be such a day. Um, maybe we should start with a basic introduction of these current bearish times. Uh, we do want to talk a lot about origin progress. We're going to talk about the bridge status update today. We're going to talk about land staking, some esports, uh, and we're also going to talk about this bear market and probably share some stories uh, from the past because as we all know, Axie was born in a bear market um, and it's actually something that we know quite well. So, um, you know, first things first, like Alex, I feel like I haven't been talking to you that much recently. We've had so much going on. What's been going on in your quadrant of the the Axie world. Yeah, maybe a good time to, to set some, uh, I guess, to qualify a little bit what, what I actually do. Uh, so I'm handling like a lot of the strategic side on the, on the business side of Sky Mavis and Axie. So on the fundraising side, you know, crisis management, when actually incident happened. Uh, so yeah, I've been pretty busy on my end of the company, of course, lately. You know, I have, a, I have something to say in the community side as well. But, you know, as we're scaling the company, my side is, is you know, getting less and less outward facing, I should say. So that's why I haven't, I'm, I'm also trying to limit my Twitter behavior a little bit after, you know, we, <laughs> some, some recent uh, events. That's good. That's good. We're, we're growing, we're maturing. It's uh, good. All things are improving. Uh, how about you, Jiho? You're much more forward facing. I, I mean, I don't want to turn this into an interview, but I'm always blown away by the amount of time that you spend on Twitter um, and how much you get done outside of that. And I, I just, I, I'm always impressed at your ability to multitask. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been hard times, but these are the types of environments that define our legacy and it's kind of nostalgic for me, right? Like Alex and I, we've only really seen each other for three days in the last two, two years or so, um, you know, most of our Axie journey, you know, in 2018, 2019, parts of 2020, they were, you know, in, in a bear market. These are the types of times that created Axie and, you know, I, I think we're, we're well suited to, to prosper and yeah, you know, tw Twitter, I think is, it's, it's important. Obviously it's, you know, it's not a cure all for communication in the early days of Axie. It was possible for us as co-founders to basically speak to the entire community by just, you know, hanging out in the discord. Those were amazing times, but times have changed. You know, tr Twitter, Substack have been helpful for scaling communication, but you know, I, th I think there's there's a lot to improve on as well. So. Do you miss those days? Like, do you miss being able to talk uh, a little more directly to the community? This is really a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Like, Alex, are, are you happy to be where you are? Or do, you, do you feel some nostalgic sometimes for those days when there wasn't that much going on? I mean, I remember hearing stories of times when Jeff and Alex would be fighting over tasks to do because there wasn't enough in the pipeline for everybody to share the load. Um, obviously, uh, we've moved on to bigger and better things, but any nostalgia for the old times? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it, we were more naive back then, I would say, <laughs> I think we're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, like I work a lot with other entrepreneurs as well. And, and I see there's a lot of hopeful, uh, individuals coming into the space. They, they see that there's an opportunity and there definitely is. I think this bear market right now is, is here to, to, to really, it's going to shake things up. Right. I mean, we'll see a lot less, uh, projects kind of coming into the space with like massive big mints. Uh, and trying to capture a lot of value um, and like more of a flight to, to quality. And I think that's really where Axie Infinity will shine. I've seen some comparisons to, you know, Axie Infinity being the, the Bitcoin of, you know, blockchain gaming, which to me kind of makes sense. I mean, we've been here for the longest, you know, we've proven through various bear cycles and now, you know, big incidents as well. 
uh, that we can recover. So, you know, it's, it's always a, a battle, I think, in this, in this industry. And it's our job as founders to, to uh, you know, communicate that clearly uh, to, to the people who are still around, I would say. It's, a, it's a definitely different days and it has a hint of nostalgia when we can actually, uh, you know, when we're seeing that it's just like uh, a different type of crowd that's involved in, in the community right now. But I think the level of discussions on Discord is also getting higher and higher and higher. Uh, you know, in terms of also in terms of governance, people actually want to be involved, try to do something. And then, and uh, yeah, overall, I'm, I think I'm very bullish about the future. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a couple of, of rough months ahead over here, uh, especially I think in the broader industry. Yeah, we, we uh, have definitely uh, effectively tested the limits of what a single Discord server can handle um, and certainly <laughs> push that one to the extreme. You know, I had a little anecdotal moment uh, at GDC in San Francisco when our whole team was together, and it was one of the first times we've had a gathering that big of so many of our new employees. And there was a moment when we sat down to dinner where I saw you and Jeff look at each other and kind of have a, a little bro moment of like, dude, we did it. Like, I remember when it was just you and me at dinners like this, and now we have a whole team of people here with specialized skills that are all like equally motivated and there was just a really, really beautiful moment there that I wish I could have had a snapshot of where it seemed like a really earnest, like, damn, dude, we still have a long ways to go, but we, we kind of did it. If we made it this far, like, how far can we go, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's worth uh, mentioning, right? So when I'm looking back at where we were versus where we are today, I couldn't, it's impossible for me to not be a bullish, right? Because when we started, it was literally just the two of us on the business side and of course we had our engineering uh, and you know we had everything we were doing on, on the product side but but overall it's such a different uh, i would say era of blockchain gaming right now and especially axie too that we can actually execute on a lot of things that that we've wanted to do for ages so if i'm putting myself in the community shoes there's always this desire to do something more like when is this feature coming when is this other feature coming you know, I'm both me and Jeff, we're the same, like we're pushing engineers. Oh, can we please do this? Like, how, how is the bandwidth? Is it, is it possible? And I think the longer we go and go and go, we realize just the limitations of, you know, this new technology, how hard it is to actually engineer something like this. And in terms of being trade-offs for, you know, both on security, if you can actually go to market fast enough. So I think over the past couple of years, been very good at kind of, you know, threading that uh, or, or threading the needle, I should say. To, to, to focus on what's important. You know, in the end, it went a little bit too fast. Uh, now we're taking a step back, focusing more on security, for example. What it means is that, you know, things things have a tendency to take a little bit longer as well. But uh, but of course, you know, we have a lot of uh, interesting things to talk about here as well. Yeah. And I'm glad to see that you know, now we can finally start to, especially Origin, right? Finally ship a game that we wanted to play for forever, right? That's kind of why we started this uh, this game too. Absolutely. Jeff, maybe it's a good time to start talking about uh, this Origin launch. Mobile just debuted. We've got some new statistics to talk about in terms of adoption and player usage. Uh, how are we looking in terms of Origin alpha testing? We're really encouraged by what we've seen with the Origin test. I'll, I want to iterate that, reiterate that there's still a long way to go. Origin is not ready for esports. It's not ready to have that transplant of the token rewards really encouraged by what we've seen so far. So I'll stick to the data, stick to the facts, and uh, here we go. So, so far there have been 535,000 unique devices that have played Origin. There are 599,000 total unique accounts that have played Origin. There are currently 600, sorry, 268,000 monthly active users and 160,000 weekly active users. Weekly active users was actually just around 40,000 last week. So because of the mobile launch, we've actually spiked from 40 to 160,000. Wow. And so, yeah, we're really encouraged, right? Like, remember, this is, right? basically 550,000 people that have played Origin with no monetary rewards, right? With no uh, Axie upgrading, no accessories, you know, no NFT runes and charms, no way to earn SLP, no Axis leaderboard rewards. So we're <laughs> incredibly excited for, <clears throat> you know, actually adding in the economy, pouring some oil on the plane. 
And uh, yeah, been really impressed by the Origin team. They've been shipping update after update. So, so far there have been four patches. Uh, these patches have introduced balancing updates, tempo updates, uh, even art update, right? Shout out to the Big Yak Society, <laughs> as I like to call them. And, uh, and, and many, and many bug fixes. So the, and the, and what I've really appreciated is I've seen the community making, giving so much feedback in such a well-structured way, people making Excel sheets, uh, and sending them directly to the team. And actually we use yeah. those. We actually are, we have a, I think a much better system too, of isolating the best community feedback and, and really making sure that that gets in front of our game designers. Yeah, I would say that the more organized uh, your spreadsheet is, the more likely it is to, to be read and digested. It's a lot of data to crunch, and we get it from a lot of different sources, but that feedback has been been pretty amazing. Uh, and one thing that I definitely want to touch on is uh, feedback about adding more competitive layers to the game, either being able to save resources or some sort of a drafting mode or maybe even both. And we hear you loud and clear on that one. It's been a very popular piece of feedback, um, and we've been exploring different ways that we can start bringing some of that mind game element into origin um and and hopefully check some of those boxes for those really hardcore competitive players that, that are missing the mind games a little bit the mind games might have been a little too much in axie classic but i think we need to maybe dial them up a little bit uh in origin also yeah i think yeah i, I want to chime in a little bit there you know me you know, I'm, I'm a big part of why you are in the team right like my background is esports i i specifically wanted andrew in the team so that we would have more people than just me who would be pushing forward this kind of esports competitive angle. So we definitely see all of the, you know, all of the the people who are excited about, you know, V2 esports, right? Uh, and we de we want to do something uh, with V3 as well. So you know that will be a priority moving forward. As you said, like I can also see that that there are challenges with the mind games. Maybe it needs to be more, you know, skill intensive. I think what we're aiming for here is always the gold standard for, for competitive gaming, right? You want it to be easy to, to, to learn, but hard to master. Mm -hmm. Because if you can nail that, basically what it means is that people can get drawn into the game. They have a feeling that they can actually win, they can improve. And that's, that's very important uh, when it comes to, you know, both long-term sustainability for the game and the esports scene. And you know, new people coming into it, so that you know, we can have a, a gradual improvement uh, of uh, of just the entire scene, so that it doesn't yeah. die out. Definitely, mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like in retrospect, it was definitely the right decision to separate the launches between desktop and mobile. Having that five or six week buffer all that time to focus just on the desktop client, get that first round of balance out, then that allows us to put more focus on mobile and give it the attention it deserves as soon as it comes out. Um, that process has felt pretty smooth. And like Jeff said, there's been a lot of balance patches and a lot more to come. Obviously, uh, we're not done yet tweaking this thing. Um, and as more players compete and we get more of that feedback, then we have more data to work on. And of course, every change creates ripple effects. So it's not just as simple as, hey, this, this ability is really powerful, let's turn it down that has ripple effects where sometimes other things have to be adjusted. So it is going to be a, a continual process in terms of collecting this feedback and then implementing balance changes because uh, it is really hard to test these things in the sandbox. Sometimes you got to just put it out there and, and see what the players are going to do. I mean, like our best players are, are professional min-maxers. All right, these guys are like professional game testers, whether they, they want to admit it or not. Being a pro player is kind of like being a pro game tester in some ways. So... Um, yeah, big shout out to our community. It's been really uh, fun to watch the origin meta evolve over the last uh, month or so. Yeah, and, and you know, releasing more patches will be key as well. You know, getting test like testing various uh, instances of the economy, especially when it relates to like various charms and runes. Uh, how does that you know make for a balanced game in the end? So what we're trying to avoid is a situation where where the game is you know massively pay to win. So it has to be balanced at, at certain aspects. So assuming you have you know leveled up to to a, a certain level, that means that you're meeting other people at that level. Uh, but in ladder, for example, maybe it's it's uncapped. So mm -hmm. these are these are things that we are exploring, but it's very you know similar to what you might find in, in other types of games. I think you know Clash for me, Clash Royale is a good example of a game that, that somehow, you know, uh, works as well, both in terms of, you know, the, the, the uh, free to play aspect and the fact that it is, um, that it is competitive, uh, and skill based. Yeah, I, I've actually been playing Crash, Clash Royale recently a little bit. And, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar in Clash Royale, right, you can earn, uh, 
upgrades and you can upgrade your cards and that helps you go further on the kind of MMR leaderboard. But when you're doing competitive play, all of your cards get kind of normalized to a base level. And, mm. and that's kind of how they balance, right? This you know, desire for people to be able to improve their cards, but also to make sure that there's uh, kind of a level field, level playing field for competitive environments. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. And a, a lot of games kind of have this where the matchmaking or the leaderboard or, you know, like solo queue in League of Legends or Dota and games like that, they have a place, right? It really matters. Uh, it is a form of esports. It's a form of training. People look at the leaderboard for scouting so that players can, you know, start to, to raise their profile a little bit. Um, and in our case, there, there is prizing involved, right? So the arena seasons do really matter. However, they are palpably different from tournaments where sometimes you need a tournament to be a little bit more normalized, have that clear playing field so that that you know exactly who the best player is and it doesn't come down to you know who, who's got more of you know x charm or x rune or, or whatever it is um but yeah working on that for sure um last note on origin i wanted to ask jeff if, about the the current plan for um balancing are we going to do something similar to what we did for axie classic like once we get season one started is the idea to use off seasons again as these kind of testing periods to implement big patches and changes in in batches Sure. So we are actually building out a live operations team. And these teams are in charge of right, running like the operations around launching patches, uh, balancing updates, in-game events, like special weekend things, uh, kind of surprises. So yeah, we have an entire team that's being built out around this. And yeah, like it, it is very important for us to have a very, very clear and well-structured process around balancing, even more so than in a traditional game because people are making you know, decisions on you know, axes that they're buying, paying, paying actual money for, so, and, and, and breeding decisions. So yeah, it is important for us to have a well-structured process. I, I envision it and expect it to be similar to what came out of V2 near the end, uh, but, but perhaps there will also be some up, upgrades and updates to that. Yeah, that, I, I also wanna, wanna flag that, right? When we're talking about you know, what makes a, a, a game last for a long time, everything is about adding new type of content. You know, we, and, and when I'm looking at what, what's, what's happening with Axie, you know, we, we barely started. I mean, up, up until this point, we've had just a couple of breed events, breeding events. Now there will be more of that type of event as well. Uh, and then in the off season or even during seasons, we, we could do other special things as well. So having that, you know, I would say that the live operations muscle being more, you know, stronger inside the Axie Infinity team will be very, very important. Up until this point, you know, we've been very involved directly uh, from, from the core team perspective. And, you know, people have been doing all sorts of different things. Like right now we're specializing, we're growing and we're using this time very, uh, I think in, in, a, in, a, in a nice way to, to make sure that, you know, just the team can, can handle scale. You know, right in the past when we hit, you know, 2.5 million daily active players, you know, the team was about 60 or 70 people and in the middle of scaling. So, you know, now is a very different, a different, different time and everything is just becoming more and more professional. So, yeah, very excited. I, I had a, our, my first onboarding call with um, one of the members of our new live ops team and very excited about some of the stuff they have in store. As I go deeper and deeper at Sky Mavis, I realize I thought I knew how to do a lot of things. Then when I talk to these true specialists, like, okay, well, I don't know anything about live ops. And what you guys have in store <laughs> is so much cooler than the stuff that I had in my head. Um, it's, it's just really exciting. Obviously, it does take new employees a little while to get caught up. The onboarding process for Web3 is cumbersome. Even if you're, you're coming from like a Web3 adjacent background, it's a lot to learn. So it will take the live ops team a little while to get their, you know, get their feet wet, uh, learn the, the flow, and uh, then finally push some stuff out. But the team is continuing to grow and, and continuing to accelerate, which I think is um, maybe the most exciting. Um, so that acceleration. I saw someone, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I saw someone talk about like a breeding event, right? For example, a breeding event. That's something that we would love to be able to run more often, right? And that requires an entire team around it. So, uh, yeah, like ops breeding events, right? That basically increases our capacity to do things like that. 
Yeah, all of the, these live events, uh, they require more management than a lot of people realize. It's not as simple as just, hey, turn on the breeding event and let it run. Like, it has to be calibrated. It has to be monitored. It has to be set up properly. It has to be distributed properly. It's it, it's like a little living creature that needs to be managed and cared for once it's deployed. Uh, and that's that's really where the live, live ops team comes in. Um, I would like to pivot a little bit, though, and maybe talk about the bridge. Uh, the bridge is still down, uh, at least not the Binance one, but the official one uh, through Ronin Chain. Um, would love any kind of status update here, anything that we can share around uh, the bridge status, because I know a lot of people are really excited for the bridge to be open. I've gotten a lot of DMs of people saying, Zayori, I want to buy Ron. Ron is the cheapest it will ever be. Please open the bridge. I want to buy this. And um, I have no answer. I don't know what to tell him other than stay tuned, coming soon. So uh, what, what do we got here, boys? How are we looking with this bridge? Yeah, I can, uh, I can uh, at least take it and then uh, maybe Jeff, if you have some, some more stuff on the bridge. You know, we, we've touched on this many times, uh, I think, in, in our Ronin uh, update post, post, right? Like the, the importance of security. And I think, um, you know, I want to reiterate that once more before we start on the timeline. You know, basically what we're trying to create here is a very key piece of infrastructure that can potentially uh, or will likely you know, even secure billions of dollars in value. So putting that into perspective with, you know, the, when, when, you're, when you're deploying smart contract code and when you're recreating uh, the logic behind the, the, the smart contract as well, like these are, these are things that, you know, if we rush them out, they could have very, very dire consequences. Now, as we like to say, okay, being hacked one time is, you know, at this level, you know, is, 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 is unfortunate, but, you know, if, if, uh, if something like this were to happen again, you know that that would be <laughs> that would be quite bad. So we're actually taking our taking our time on this one. Now on the positive side, you know it has already gone through one internal audit. Like the logic is is created, the internal audit is done, the external first audit is also done, and we're now considering if we're even going to do another external audit uh, uh, as well, uh, depending on on, uh, on how long that will take. Uh, but we're still, I think, on time before for the end of this month. But you know I don't want to make any absolute guarantees. Uh, just because of the importance of this uh, piece of infrastructure. Um, now that said, of course, I think it's important for people who are educating themselves about this blockchain space to, to understand that, you know, while the blockchains usually themselves is, is hard to, to, to crack, like hard to hack, this one piece, like basically the bridge for all different type of chains uh, is one of the chink in the armor. So if we're not careful, you know, we, 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 uh, we could uh, end up in a pretty bad situation as well. Now, when we're looking specifically at the logic, like what kind of fixes that we're making it, I think one you know very important thing that we're trying to to achieve here is, in fact, like what what happens if some someone finds a way to not hack the uh, the entire contract, but there is some flaw inside the another smart contract on Ronin, which is deployed by either someone else sometime in the future. Basically, these guys can exit with a significant piece of money. What you would need then is some kind of circuit breaker system. And what that means is that if you're trying to like exit with too much money, the entire bridge will you know shut down and make sure that there's a human person who is actually checking in and saying that, okay, now this is something dangerous. We need to manually review this, uh, which is very, you know, which is very key in a situation, uh, you know, when, when, when things are so, you know, on the bleeding edge. So I think like a lot a of people safe that kicks in like, yeah. like the, a, a smarter sort of scanning sensor that's able to say, hey, everyone, th this is atypical behavior. We need approval. Yeah. Kind of like if I send a wire, my bank texts me and says, hey, this is weird. This is a lot of money. Are you did, did you do this? Are you sure you want to do this? And if you say yes, then it's all yeah. good. But if you say no, it's like, OK, account frozen, full stop. Let's figure out what's going on here before we proceed. Is, is that a good layman's analogy yeah. for what we're kind of talking about? Yeah, it's a good way to to, to explain it in a very in a very clear fashion. Basically, it's a it's a type of two factor authentication. Uh, but of course, you know some damage uh, might already have been done at that point. I think when we're looking at what benefits blockchain technology enables for for users, and we see how many people want to to experience these benefits, like they want to own their digital assets, want to own their their game items and identity. You know, we see, and of course, the, the possibility to even make some money here on the hobby that you love, you know, that is incredibly powerful. So we see a lot of people coming into this industry without actually without actually understanding the risks that are involved here. I think from a Sky Mavis perspective, a part of everything that we're making, we're trying to limit the risk that the players and users actually have to, to experience, you know, which is why also this is taking some time. 
but yeah, uh, excited for for the progress. And of course, you know, we see when when there is, for example, some discrepancy with the with the Katana price uh, because there is a not it's not possible to transfer in USDC, for example. Like that is a big problem because, as you mentioned, you know, people can't buy the asset that they want for the relative USD price. So we definitely see that. But you know, from our perspective the alternative is not really there. Like we, we really just need to get this done in a safe way. And yeah. we actually, I know everyone is you know, tired of hearing this. We have to zoom out here. Like this mission that we're on, it's not going to be finished tomorrow. It's not going to be finished in next week. You know, we're talking years here for everything that we're trying to achieve. Like basically a new piece of the internet is being rebuilt right in front of your eyes. And everyone who's still in the chat right now is very, very early. And I think you can all see this when you see all the spikes that are happening, how like aggressively the price is going up or down. You know, I don't think anyone who started last year could have imagined the emotional harm like it does when you see the price going up. Oh, it feels great. Then the price goes down. You know, we all have to experience this. And these are the times that you all become OGs. Like this is actually just before the like the, the when people when actually is going mainstream. So, you know, that's what we're aiming for. So welcome <laughs> to, the, to everyone. The rebirth. To yeah, the, the Phoenix yeah, is, is exactly. about to take off for sure. I think sometimes it's easy for people to forget how big our stack is at Sky Mavis and Axie Infinity, where if you compare us to a lot of other blockchain games, um, they just have to focus on the game. They don't have to worry about managing the blockchain or the bridge or uh, you know their decks or any of these other things. It's really just a game that exists on another blockchain. In our case, there's a lot of moving parts that we have to secure and make sure that full stack is operational scalable and ready to bring new people into the ecosystem so it is it is just uh, a lot we've got a lot on our plate right now um, and it is going to set us up for great success in the future uh, and let Axie and Ronin um, maintain its spot as a leader in the space especially for NFT gaming but um, yeah we, we've got a, a lot going on Jeff I don't know if you have anything else uh, that you wanted to add about uh, the, the bridge or the the current stack at Axie Infinity yeah I just also want to clarify that uh, after speaking with engineering, the goal is still to have the bridge up by end of month. That is still the goal. And the reason is so one of the questions that I've seen a lot is like, right, like, okay, why don't you just add more validators, right? That was the root cause of the problem, right? Like, why can't you just add more validators and open up the bridge right now? It's a little bit more complicated than that. Right. As Alex mentioned, we're adding this circuit breaker system, which is kind of like a 2FA. And in order to add that, we actually have to write a new smart contract for the bridge. It needs to be made sure that it's safe, audited, et cetera. So that is why we couldn't just, hey, we added more validators like and reopen the bridge. Right. It's it's a it's a lot, it's a it's a lot more complex than that. And we want to make sure that, right. This is mission critical. This is our nation's capital that we're talking about. So there can't be any shortcuts with this. Definitely. That makes perfect sense. I appreciate that uh, additional color. Um, maybe we can move on now to one of the other big spinning plates uh, that we need to deliver on land staking. Um, this was one that people were really excited about. We reviewed or uh, revealed rather the current status of land. There were a lot of folks that uh, were a little bit disappointed with what Phil and I had to say on stream. So we very quickly announced that, okay, land staking is a thing. We will be able to lock up our land and get some sort of a yield in terms of AXS per plot. This is temporary. This is until land gameplay has been deployed and there's a more meaningful gameplay function attached to that um, AXS allocation. Uh, we have not officially launched the land staking yet, but it's getting real close. I've been seeing some prototypes. I've been seeing some screenshots, um, and we are almost here. And I think for this one, we actually have a special guest that we can bring in to help talk about it. Um, I chatted with him not too long ago on a fireside about security, but it's Al of Moistness, or just Al uh, for short. He's been around the Axie community for a long time, uh, notorious for working on several different aspects of our stack way back in the day. A man that really doesn't need much introduction, but happy to have him with us here. Al, are you with us? Can you hear us okay? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello, everyone. you sound great. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, so give us uh, give us the update. How go things with land staking? Maybe some color on exactly what you're working on. I'm sure the people are very curious to hear uh, what your day-to-day -day looks like when it comes to Axie land. 
Sure, sure. So to give a bit of context, uh, some few weeks ago, uh, I got approached by um, Alex and Jeff to say, hey, Al, do you have some time to help us on the uh, landstaking? I've been pretty, I've been voicing myself a lot to them and they said, yeah, it would be great to have you on. And um, so I got, I got, you know, acquainted with the dev team of Sky Mavis and uh, basically, you know, I got the specs of how things should be done. And I said, okay, yeah, give me, give me some days, you know, you have a lot on your plate and, you know, I want to, I want to test that, you know, the, the dev team um, has so much to do with the bridge and origin and so much more cool things. And, um, you know, I've done so many uh, staking reward contracts and everything that I was like, yeah, it just, it just makes sense to do it. And uh, so, so far for the update, everything is looking very good. Uh, I've been working with them for the last two to three weeks. I've uh, been bouncing uh, reviews, ideas, suggestions back and forth. And more or less today, I think that in terms of security, we have, a, uh, we have reached consensus that uh, the contracts are safe. We're going through some final refactoring changes where uh, we need to make sure that some information is publicly exposed for the front end to be uh, integrated easily. And overall, it's just been a very good you know, experience to be working with, uh, with, uh, with the Sky Mavis team. It's a bunch of very talented people. Uh, I just felt like they knew exactly what they wanted. They knew exactly what should be done. And um, it's, it just felt so natural. Like it was just, yeah, I, do, I need to do this. And they, they, they answered exactly with the things that I needed. You know, based on what I gave them, they were very happy as well. And overall, I just want to say it was just an amazing experience to work with you guys. And um, yeah, it should be very, very soon until we have front-end integration. I don't have an ETA for that, sadly. I can just say on the smart contract that we're very much done in terms of security and that um, we're just doing some final little changes. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to say. I don't want to leak. I am notorious for leaking stuff. <laughs> So I'm trying not to say too much and uh, get kicked out of this uh, chat. <laughs> yeah, well, well done. I appreciate it there. I, I share you on that. I'm always jealous when I'm in calls with Jeff and Alex because they have full jurisdiction to decide what gets leaked and when. And I'm always uh, very timid. I'm always looking at Jeff for approval. Like, can we, can we tell him? Can we tell him now? Um, so, but yeah, that was a, a great update. Very glad to hear that the back end is looking good. Uh, Jeff or Alex, I don't know if you have anything specific you want to add about land, but that actually answered m most of my questions aside from when, but uh, it sounds like we're, we're not going to be answering that exactly here today. So basically to summarize, right, looks like the technical work is almost done on the smart contract side. Owl has been doing an amazing job. I'm actually in the chat where he's working with our engineers and it's been a joy to see a community member and our de de uh, development team working so seamlessly together. I think it's a great indicator of the future where Sky Mavis is working very much hand in hand with the community. So there has been some initial design work done, but that needs to be finalized and then uh, the smart contract needs to be kind of integrated with the front end and that, that, that needs to be tested for like responsiveness and things like that. So yeah, don't want to give any timelines, but things are, things are looking good. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think, um, I, I want to touch on, uh, is my mic okay, by the way? Yep. You... Yeah, you're all good. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. So I want to touch on something that a lot of people have been asking about it's governance, of course. Um, and I think one thing that, that we've tried to do since the beginning is, is you know, say that the people who are the governors of Axie Infinity in some kind of capacity, they deserve to be rewarded uh, with new AXS tokens. Uh, and that's actually tied to staking as well. So those who, those who are staking AXS tokens, you know, or own AXS tokens, they are a part of the governors of the network. And, and you know, that's, the, that's the future of Axie Infinity. Now, getting to a point where where you know they, the underlying platform is totally finished and can be fully governed by the community, it will still take some time. You know, just just by a function of you know how difficult it is to create some of these uh, some of these systems. But you know, it, it's going to happen quite soon, where we are ready to roll out you know some light governance. I think we're already tested with with some voting on Discord, um, and more platforms are you know being being tested uh, all the time. So it, it is coming. It is happening. You know, we this the goal is has been. And the stated goal is to 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 turn Axie Infinity into a decentralized organization, uh, but yeah, it def definitely takes time. <laughs>
Yeah, that, that first step is going to be some sort of asset or token gated type platform where the governors or mayors of Axie can start to communicate. You know, Twitter and Discord and these public tools are fantastic, but it also feels like we've outgrown them a little bit and we need to start weighting voices by, you know, what's your stake in the ecosystem? You know, if you don't have any AXS and you're the loudest one in the room, we might need to make an adjustment to the way that room is structured a little bit um, or else this governance thing is never going to be able to scale or, or get organized to really take off um, and how we distribute those AXS tokens are a really big deal and I think that's part of the thesis around why esports is so important um, because AXS is a big part of the prizing for esports and all things equal I think professional players and people that are really dedicated to competing in the ecosystem should be all things equal more likely to care about governance and want to use those tokens to you know voice their opinions and have control rather than just cashing out and treating it like you know an, another fiat currency um, Al, I'd love to, while we have you here, maybe just pick your brain a, a little bit about governance. You know, you're, you're someone who's very deep in, uh, you know, the Web3 ecosystem. Are, are you bullish on, on governance right now? Like, are you nervous? What makes you most nervous about this transition to, to turn Axie into a, a proper DAO? It's a lot of things to consider. Uh, the DAO development just in general is still at its infancy, even though there's been so much on ongoing. Um, one of the projects I work with is called Coordinate. It's a payment system for DAOs, uh, which is something that could easily be integrated with Axie um, because it's about rewarding community members uh, based on their work uh, with a peer-to-peer -peer greeting system. And uh, basically, you know, I've been basically uh, learning by osmosis a lot, by, you know, being with a lot of, you know, great minds that work specifically for DAO uh, creation and development. And I think it's a great idea to do that. It just makes complete sense having the community work hands in hands with, you know, the people that steer the ship initially to eventually have this organism that, that works and, you know, in a correct way where, you know, the wisdom of crowd will know what to do. But the thing is, before we reach this idealistic way of thinking with DAOs, there needs to be a lot of things to be considered, a lot of different systems to be tested. And, you know, there's, uh, there will be a lot of mistakes and errors to go through, but, you know, that's basically how you learn. You don't, you don't uh, create a rocket to go on the moon on your first try. You go through 10, 20, 30, thousands of iterations. And um, I still think that it's definitely the best way to go onwards. Um, but it will take a lot of time because uh, the whole uh, ecosystem, the whole crypto world blockchain is working on it and there hasn't been a clear solution. And Axie is, and SkyMavis in the extension is very game focused, a game focused DAOs. Again, a very minimal work has been done on those type of systems as well. So I'm, I'm still very bullish because it just makes sense to do so, but uh, reaching it will be a lot of trial and error. Uh, personally, that's what I think. I think that's good insight. I, I was just watching the the SpaceX or the Elon documentary on, on Netflix, and it talks a lot about failure and uh, the R&D process being a very brutal one that has a, a lot of missteps and really what separates the, the winners from the losers in those systems are the people that are able to, to pony up and try again and just continue to keep reapplying what they've learned uh, to improve. So I, I think that does fit with a lot of our, our internal mantras. You know, Jiho's famous 1% better every day, I think very much is in line with that perpetual learning kind of failures or opportunities uh, to really learn and make sure we don't make those same mistakes again. So um, I, I agree with you, actually, but uh, <laughs> a yeah. lot of foundation still needs to be created. I love this quote, which is uh, success is uh, getting up one time more than you've fallen. Wow. Damn, that's deep. <laughs> wow. Are we quoting, what's it, rock gear right now? You know, it's not how far, like how far. <laughs> what does he say? Like, it's not, oh, what's that? <laughs> Oh God! Sorry, I snorted. That was too funny. Um, no, it, it ain't how hard. It ain't about how hard you you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's right. There you go. There and we go. That, that, that's the axi motto right now. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep it up. I, I like that. Um, no, it is really exciting, and I think that challenge of building a game into a DAO is a, a lot of what uh, attracted me to this position. Of like, this is a really big problem to solve. I don't know exactly how we're going to solve it, but man, this is a really exciting problem to start chipping away at. So, um, 
Yeah, slow and steady. I always tell people it feels like we have a lot to lose by getting governance wrong. So this is another system where I'd rather move a little more slowly and methodically, piece by piece, rather than trying to rush it. Because if we get it wrong, um, it's it's hard hard to undo, right? You only get one first try at structuring the DAO, so to speak. Yeah, and it, plans for it, it, sorry, it's worth uh, it's worth saying here that you know over time we've been first at many things. Like we're the one who created the you know play to earn or play and earn model, uh, and we can see you know there there's definitely room for improvement there. Uh, I think moving forward, you know, it's good to be able to see how other systems are you know responding to 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 being first as well, so that we can maybe pick up some learnings uh, along the way here as well. You know, back in the day when we started, we were the first at everything, so. It's hard to, to, to take learnings, but now, you know, actually there are other good products that might go to market as well. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes, um, but it doesn't mean that everything is, you know, being done in the correct way. So, you know, they're definitely uh, interesting to follow. Definitely. In the beginning, we've had this notion, right, where our assumption was that the current systems of coin-based voting were broken, right? That's why in the white paper for Axis, as soon as it was released, we had this idea of the Axie score as this modifier that can basically take your achievements within the Axie ecosystem to act as this weighting system uh, for, for your vote. So governance is very complex. There is research that needs to be done, and we hope to be able to yeah, engage with the community on that research before we actually deploy uh, the system into production. Definitely. Um, all right. Well, Al, thank you so much for waking up early to join us today. Uh, no such thing as a global time zone, but we're doing our best. Uh, really appreciate your personal sacrifice there and uh, all of your, your hard work in the Axie ecosystem. I know the community is really excited about uh, the land staking update. And um, I know a lot of people feel at ease knowing that you are one of the, the masterminds behind the smart contract. So uh, sincerely, thank you, man. We, we would not be here in the same capacity without you. Hey, no worries. It's been a pleasure and I ho do hope that I get involved uh, as much as possible in the future and potentially you write as uh, even more cooler smart contracts and get to more work with you guys more. So uh, thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the stream, guys. And uh, question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, when, when is that happening, actually? You're going to have to stay okay, tuned like, for that one. You're going to have to watch I, like everyone I, else, Al. No I don't know what here. it is, actually. It's pretty <laughs> Fun to keep people in the dark, that's for sure. Um, all right, well, let's keep moving right along. Uh, we mentioned esports earlier, and maybe this is a section where I'll talk a little bit more, but I um, wanted to keep people up to date because we are in a really unique time right now for Axie. We're switching from Axie Classic to Axie Origin. Uh, for pro players, this is really complicated because all of the earnings are still on Axie Classic. We still have a grant active where most of the tournaments are because Origin is, is not quite ready. It's like just getting there to be able to start experimenting with some tournaments. We're doing uh, an origin championship in the Philippines that was kind of inspired by the Creator Cup that we did uh, in December last year. So that's going to be uh, a lot of fun. We'll have the broadcast talent announced for that uh, very soon. 16 players, eight invitations, eight qualified directly from Philippines. It is going to be live in, uh, in studio again. So uh, we are continuing to ramp up esports, continuing to plant seeds. Um, but this is admittedly just a, a challenging time where uh, folks are afraid to go all in on origin because they know a lot of things are still going to change the game's still being tweaked there's big balance changes so it feels scary to start breeding for origin but they also recognize that origin is the future um i, I don't have the exact uh, elegant solution here other than this is a transition period and uh, we appreciate everyone's patience everyone's feedback while we continue um to to work on this uh, season one for origin will be a really big change for once uh, you know those earnings are turned on but we're not there quite yet um, we are going to wait for this this grant to wrap up. We've still got about a month left uh, of tournaments, maybe about a month and a half. Uh, most of them will still wrap up on Axie Classic. Make sure that the competitive integrity is intact. You know, we're not doing anything where we start with Axie Classic and then switch to Origin for the finals. We've instructed everybody to keep it consistent. If you started in Classic, you should finish in Classic. If you start in Origin, you should finish in Origin. Um, this won't be the last esports grant either. We do have some big announcements in the pipeline, and later this year, I think we're really going to dial up the grant. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of external esports organizers and teams that are 
watching Axie and very curious about what we have in the pipeline uh, and are thinking about making some moves. So uh, we're still la uh, laying a lot of groundwork for esports, and I think it's really important that we don't move too quickly. You know, Origin has to be ready for the, the competitive um, scene to, to make that switch. Um, but we're, we're making good progress. Uh, I also wanted to give a, a quick shout out to a couple of our organizers that did really great work. Uh, Quest stepped up and did a really amazing tournament. The Axie Joy folks have been innovating and doing really cool things, combining like entertainment with the competitive aspect of esports. Uh, LSL, uh, they just wrapped up the Lunasian Scholarship League. They've really evolved and they started as this little tiny, hey, we do scholarship tournaments. And now they're just a full blown tournament organizer that's, that's working with us directly on production. Uh, the Beat Invitational was another one that players said was very well run and very well organized. So uh, we have had some pretty big wins on this second grant. And um, I think it's really important to recognize that some of the tournaments that felt a little sloppy or amateurish, it's because they're run by community members who are learning how to run tournaments for the first time. And like, this is really how we scale this thing. We have to teach people these skills. We have to teach people how to run events and broadcast streams and produce this kind of stuff. And um, I think we're doing a good job uh, producing some high level stuff and also giving people opportunities to learn and experiment in our ecosystem with a little bit of uh, that play to earn um, AXS on the line. So. Sorry for that uh, long-winded little spiel about esports, but TLDR, feeling good, feeling bullish, and despite the, the kind of road bumps here as we make this transition, um, Axie Esports is still still full, full steam ahead, and we're seeing some really cool storylines start to uh, evolve. Yeah, I I, uh, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about something that, that we just actually discovered on, on, the, on the main Axie Discord. You know, it, it's related to, uh, to, to the recent incident that we had uh, where uh, a bot was compromised. It was just like actually announced by Me6 that one of their employees uh, was compromised. Uh, oh. And then uh, they used that access level to, to send out a fake uh, mint link to various other servers. Uh, so Axie Infinity among others, I think Moodbirds or something along those lines uh, were, were also among those who had activated Me6. You know, as it goes out, what's going to happen is more and more of these attack services are going to become apparent. You know, we are taking every uh, single precaution that we can to limit these attack vectors. But the reason why, you know, what's happening here is that, you know, there's actually a ongoing, at least it feels like a, a, a war against the entire crypto space, right? Where where people are trying to, 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 uh, to scam others. Uh, and it's something that everyone needs to be aware of. You know, when you are in the space, and you are trying to, you know, when you're trying to make it basically, or you're trying to navigate all of these new things, you know, the, when you're custodying your own funds, it also includes a lot and significant risk. So when something turns out to be, like seems to be too good to be true, you know, you probably need to do a lot of research, you know, in Axie and Sky Mavis, you know, we guarantee, we never guarantee any type of, you know, massive financial return or anything like that. You know, this is a game that we're making, we're using tokens to incentivize the right kind of behavior. And we believe in sharing, uh, you know, sharing the governance of the Axie Infinity game. You know, that's kind of the stated purpose. And if you see someone else who's trying to abuse the Axie Infinity brand or wherever else that might be, you know, by promising massive returns, you know, there's probably uh, something to, to, to be very careful with because we will not do that. Um, now that said, you know, we're, we're updating the, the Roland wallet right now. We just had a recent update you know, where we're now detecting phishing sites and, you know, giving out massive, like active warnings. So yeah, definitely something to be aware of as you are operating in, in this uh, crypto space. And also, you know, make sure to educate your friends, family, everyone else that, you know, there is a risk. If you click the wrong link, if you accept that transaction or sign that message, you know, you can possibly lose everything that you have, uh, you have gathered over these years. Yeah. So, you know, this happens to the best of us. So be careful about that. You really have to develop this muscle of skepticism for everything, um, even for, you know, communities that you're a part of. Hey, I've got this great NFT and there's a drop coming. Double, triple, quadruple check that you're using the official links from an official source. Verify those links with other places that also seem like official sources. Y you really can never be too careful. And I like the way you framed it, Alex. It feels like there's a war against uh, Web3 in general. You know, it, it's not even just us specifically. But, um, you know, there's a lot of folks that, for whatever reason, aren't a fan of the technology that we're working on.
Um, but yeah, great, great PSA there, Alex. And, and maybe this is maybe a, a good segue to sort of our, our final topic, uh, talking about th this bear market a little bit um, and maybe sharing some inspiration or words of advice uh, for folks that are, are struggling with this. You know, for a lot of people, this is their first bear market. Uh, they've never experienced this before. And it is scary. I, I will say my first bear market, uh, you know, five years ago or whatever it was, I, I paper handed. I hung on for a while and then I dumped and said, all right, crypto's dead, moving on. And, uh, you know, here we are. I came on back and obviously I have some regrets about being weak in those moments. Um, so I've learned some hard lessons anecdotally, but I know you guys have been through way more than I have when it comes to bear markets. Yeah, I mean, we lived through this, right? Me and Jeff, we lived in the same room. We didn't have any money almost. You know, the, the <laughs> we almost went bankrupt at the time. It was a bit of a shit show. You know, <laughs> what, what, what I remember most of that is, you know, it's kind of true. Like the, the, the road is, you know, the, or the, the journey. How do I, like, I keep forgetting this one in, in English as well. But the, the point is that, you know, as you experience things, you become stronger over time. And, you know, the, the road to wealth creation or to creating any kind of product is, is just as important as, you know, when you actually generate, when, when you get that wealth. I think as people have discovered, when you suddenly come into a lot of money or especially in these bull markets, you know, when things seem to just be flowing in your way, you actually appreciate it a little bit less. So sometimes it's good to zoom out and see, you know, actually how unique is it to be able to, to even be in the crypto space right now when, when you see like the potential uh, and everything here, like the, the underlying fundamentals of, of blockchain technology, what we're actually here to create has not changed, even in the past six months when the market is going down. You know, what I believe in is that people that are operating online deserve to own their digital assets. That also means their game assets. And that is by extension, your digital identity. Everything that you do inside whatever platform, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Axie, it should belong to, to, you, to you as a person. And you should be able to bring that with you. Not necessarily to use in everything else, but you know, as memories, as as things that prove what, what it is that you do online. So, you know, I think for me that's very important, uh, and I want to, to incorporate more of that inside Axie, and we will be doing that um, as well. So, I, I mean, I'm incredibly bullish about this. I think that even though it is tough to to kind of get through it, to see when your portfolio is dropping, you know, when suddenly friends keep saying, "Oh, this is just a scam," you know, that this is actually when you can find true friends in the space, because when you look around yourself, when the price is just going up, everyone is super FOMO and bullish and like, they're trying to say, oh, you should buy this, you should buy X, Y, Z. Uh, and people aren't really thinking about it. Uh, but now, you know, you really, you really have to consider a little bit more about, you know, what am I actually putting my money in? Why do I have it here? Like, does this make sense? Is this a solid product? Do we believe that this game or this startup can actually make it? There is a reason why investing in startups and, and like early stage companies has been kept for the, for the like uh, sophisticated investors. It's because most of these companies, they will go to zero. Um, and that's just a fact of, of, you know, how hard it is to make a company in this, in this, uh, in, in, in this life. You know, there are so many things that can happen along the way, you know, suppliers, you run out of money, you know, you get hacked or all of these other things are reasons that, you know, companies go under. The longer that a company is alive, the longer or, well, you know, it's at least more likely that that company will stick around for a longer period of time. So I guess that's it. That is kind of what I want to say uh, in this. And of course, you know, go out, touch some grass, you know, <laughs> try to spend a little bit of time outside. It's very, very important and try to reset yourself. If you find that, you know, it's, it's uh, coming into your mental health. That's it. Yeah. I remember one time think, you uh, said, Alex, uh, minting something on the blockchain is like minting a piece of your digital soul. And I've never forgotten that. That's such a great stoic way to like express the gravity of the blockchain and this idea that it's there forever. And what might be a funny meme today might not be so funny five or 10 years from now. And it just is a really great way to think about the gravity uh, and the impact and kind of magnitude of what we're doing here. And in the bull market, it gets so easy to be caught up in chasing gains or these new collections or whatever else. And if you're looking at those collections right now with a lot of regret or like, oh my gosh, why did I buy this stupid picture that I, I don't even like or that I'm embarrassed to have, this is a really good time to start reflecting on what was the process that led you to make that decision and how can you create a system that will help you to prevent yourself, you know, save you from yourself 
in the next bull market, next time this happens. Because if you, you watch crypto long enough, you realize it's all cycles. This stuff does just cycle. There will be other bear markets. There will be other bull markets. And as long as you're learning from each one and improving your personal process, um, you're, you're winning. You know, you might not be winning at this specific snapshot right now, but you'll be able to look back in the future and go, oh, I remember when I made that mistake. I remember what I learned and I'm never making that mistake again. That's really powerful stuff. And that those are the people that come out of these bear markets a lot stronger than they started. Yeah, Jeff. So yeah, my, my, my bear market story, I, I put it out on Twitter. I think it resonated with some people. I'll, t I'll tell it again here, right? Where I came in to crypto in December of 2017. That was like the Pico top of ICOs. Uh, everything was mooning. ETH was, you know, a thousand to fourteen hundred dollars. You know, we we're breeding crypto kitties. And yeah, like, you know, from that moment, ETH went from four, you know, fourteen hundred in January of 2018, you know, all the way to basically eighty dollars in December of that year. And by that time I was working uh, on Axie and, you know, we had raised some ETH for the origin sale, it was, I remember sitting in an address that we could look at. And I remember every, you know, almost every day, probably every day, let's be realistic, every day looking at it and, and seeing the amount go down. Right. And that was literally our company's bank account online. Anyone could look at it. And it was clear that it was going <laughs> very quickly to zero. So I remember when it was maybe there was $15,000 of ETH in it at one point, I think I, I stopped getting paid. Uh, it was a really sad, it was actually, I remember go, you know, going to the office in Vietnam and I would go on a back of a grab, like this uh, motorbike. And I remember those uh, rides being so hard. Like, what am I doing? Like I'm separated from my friends, my family. Uh, I'm in a different country. Like uh, ETH has gone down 95%. <laughs> it was, it was really, really bad. It was probably the hardest month of my life. And, um, but things got better, right? So there's always, it's always darkest before the dawn. Not to say that, you know, this is that moment. Um, we're probably in for a couple of hard years, maybe, or months. It, it's really hard to say. Nobody can, nobody can predict the market. But yeah, you know, I, I wanted to share that story because I think it's important that you guys know that we also have gone through these very humanizing experiences, right? And crypto is hard, it's hard for all of us. And it feels amazing sometimes when things are going well and it, feel, and it, and it feels really, really bad when, and when things are going poorly, right? And yeah, I think all we can do is make sure that we control what we control. You continue to get up every day. You can, you're frugal, you don't waste money. You get 1% better. You go outside, you exercise, you spend time with your friends and family, right? You need to separate your crypto identity with your real world identity as well. Like you can't like let that spill over into the real world. That's just gonna, right? It, it, it's just gonna be a toxic cycle. Like when you're hanging out with your significant other, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever, right? Like you need to be yourself. You can't let that affect seep into your personal relationships that's going to be toxic and that's going to be far worse than losing money that's that's really great advice i, I definitely experienced some of that as an esports commentator when i was just coming up i i had one identity and it felt like my entire psyche was ride or die with how i performed on any given day and if twitch chat are the people reviewing your performance uh you're gonna have more bad days than good days let's put it that way and it was really powerful to me to realize Andrew and Zayori can be slightly different entities. There's a huge Venn diagram there and they influence each other, but sometimes it's good just to check out and have that separation and kind of compartmentalize your online identity and just, you know, and enjoy an ice cream with your friends. It's the little things. It really is. It seems so silly. I've, I've been playing Mario Kart with my new roommates. I mean, that, I, I, that's like simple, basic stuff, but it's, it's a great stress release. It's really fun to just play a simple, basic, easy game and have a night with your buds. Uh, that, that's where I go, at least, uh, when, when times get dark in, in these bearish moments. But um, Yeah, w w one thing is also, I think, worth, worth noting here. And I mentioned it about you know, finding friends online. You know, the, the, the real issue is, is that actually if you go somewhere to vent and you, and you try to vent online to the people that you have been, you know, 
chatting with in the in a bull market. I think that's really when people see your your true personality. Mm-hmm. So I, what I would say is that maybe if there is one person or two per- people that you really really trust, you guys can complain together. But you know, be very <laughs> careful about that because the more you know you guys start complaining or talking negative, like it actually spirals into your own. You know, just your, your your how you view everything, right? So if you're too negative about the the world, you know, you you're not going to be able to to bounce back when things actually start going up again, because you're going to be like, oh fuck, you know, whatever, you know, this is just another fake relief rally. Like that entire like Wall Street cheat sheet, it is a thing because st- people stop believing that you know a real future can actually happen, that you know tech stocks or whatever Axie or anything is going to be able to recover because you get so emotionally drained, and that's really when you when you when you actually sell the bottom <laughs> so you know nobody knows if the market is going to go up or down in, in the in the long in the in the medium term or short term but what we do know at least historically that things will improve over time if you truly believe in the tech and this industry and if you think that people deserve to own the digital items and assets you know you should probably stick around in some kind of capacity but then zoom out and come back once you are in a better mental state. Now, I think that's kind of the final uh, word I'll say on this one, because I know there's a lot of, you know, hey, question mark. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, when, that's, when is that actually happening? Yeah, I, I think we're we're about to wrap here. So, no, that that's great, Alex. Um, I, I agree entirely with everything you said. And it's really important to separate venting, which is very healthy to process and get things out of your system, from, like, the pity party where you're creating this feedback loop of negativity where you're just constantly uh, bringing everyone else down and then they're bringing you down and it, it becomes really toxic really quick. So um, some, some little thoughts there to consider. But um, it's also... Yeah, Jeff. Please. Also, I'll say one, one, one thing, right? Like, I see a lot of people, you know, complaining about whatever Axie, the market on Twitter, right? That that creates a positive feedback loop where that type of toxic behavior becomes viral. <laughs> Other people see it, and that actually becomes the thing that hurts and causes, you know, the project to go down, whether it be Axie or anything else, right? So it's like, not to say that you should be, you know always positive but sometimes right like when you put those negative emotions out there on the internet it negatively affects other people and that hurts the project that you actually care about if you didn't care about it you probably wouldn't be complaining about it right so let's just find constructive ways um yeah well said all right boys well always a pleasure to do these dev chats when we get the chance always great to uh hear from uh you know the big brains psych out and jiho you were the first two that i worked with closely when i started at sky mavis and now the team is so big i actually treasure the these uh, rare moments where the three of us get to sit down and rap for an hour so uh very much thank you to both of you for your time thank you everyone for watching and please enjoy what we have next All right. All right. Just kidding. It's not over yet. You think we we're going to drop that and then just walk away? Folks, welcome to the post show. AxiCon 2022. It is official. September 7th through 10th, Barcelona, Spain. We're going to be doing it. A physical gathering of our digital nation. Three days of Axi magic. Builders, battlers, dreamers, and thinkers alike. It's going to be an epic affair. I can't be more excited to finally debut this to the world. I've been working on AxiCon for ages, boys, and it's finally here, ready to share with the world. Jeff, um, how are you feeling? Give me some of those emotions. I know you're feeling it too. I'm super excited. You've done an amazing job pushing pro- pushing this project forward. I think we've all made amazing friends in the Axie universe, and some of them we've never met in real life, right? So AxiCon, I think, is going to be an awesome way for us to finally meet some of our friends that we've made from halfway along or around the globe. There's also going to be like a lot of programming and coverage for those that can actually fly to 
to Spain or Barcelona. So uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be a landmark event. I think that there are going to be lifelong friendships that are made at the event. There are going to be people who find fellow builders and start projects there. So yeah, I, I can't wait. And I've never been to Barcelona. I'm, I, I want to see what it's all about. I've heard that it's amazing. And yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So. Yeah, I think Barcelona should be an amazing selection for a number of reasons. It's a great time zone. It's very accessible. It's in the EU. Um, the the layout of Barcelona is just fantastic. The venue that we've chosen is very centrally located. It's very close to the beach. There's a lot of hotels. There's a lot of restaurants. There's a lot of places for pop-up events, side events, you know, people that aren't part of the conference to just come and hang out and kind of get a taste for Axie. Um, Spain is actually one of our biggest demographics in Europe by a pretty good margin. So there should be a huge local community there that'll be able to, to turn up, hang out, um, and be a part of, of the magic. Um, we definitely, like you said, Said, are planning on broadcasting most of it. We're going to have developer panels. We're going to have guest speakers, keynotes. We'll have esports. Um, we are going to have some things on site. We'll have some like governance talk rooms and a couple of other activities for the folks that are there. But we want to capture this and, and put it online. We want everyone at home that can't make it to Barcelona to have a chance to participate um, and feel like they're they're part of this this big AxiCon experience because this is this is a pivotal point for our community. I, I really believe it. All these smaller events and meetups that you know Jeff and I have been attending all over the world these have just been starters these have been proof of concept to make sure that the hype is there that the community wants this and uh, these these meetups have been a tremendous success and I'm excited to carry everything that we've learned um, into AxiCon which is going to completely up the ante compared to anything that we've done before yeah I, I what I'm excited about is you know some of these like of course Mystic Hardy party lounges and you know the 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 massive esports tournament, or I would say like what might be the beginning of, of Axie Origin esport, right? I mean the the tournament there should be you know where we where you can meet your favorite pro players, where you can meet some guys in the team, you know, um, and just just overall the the for, for example some of the merchandise that we're looking at here, you know, that might be very exclusive for only those who actually travel there. So you know now is the time to to make sure that you know if you ever wanted to do something in Axie, you know, make sure to travel there. Um, and say hi to us and be a part of this thing that we're trying to create here. Like we can't make Axie alone. This is something that, that involves all of you, everyone who's in this chat and everyone who's looking at this, you know, replay and like, oh, maybe I should get, like see what this Axie thing is about. You know, what we see and hear about Axie Infinity Meetups is that, you know, this is real. This is a thing that has impacted the lives across, you know, so many different people across the world. And if we can get this thing right, you know, it can impact, you know, possibly everyone, right? So, you know, I really do believe that Axie Infinity has the potential to be, you know, the Pokemon of Web3. You know, that's the inspiration for when we made this. I think, you know, being able to, to truly own these, these, these Axie assets is unique. And, you know, being a part of that community in real life, I think is something that people have been missing. So make sure to travel there, meet us, uh, grab some exclusive merch. Uh, and take part in even the governance and, you know, learn more about security, learn more about like who, who are the people and the investors that are behind this project. I think there are many, many uh, different things here that, you know, if you go there, you will learn more just about everything that we're trying to achieve. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, there will be a lot more announcements specific to AxiCon, the esports uh, element, how that's going to work, how you can qualify, uh, the speakers, the keynotes. This is basically your save the date, location, date, and commitment that AxiCon is happening. There will be a lot more details to come um, as, as September gets closer. But of course, wanted to make sure everyone had plenty of time to start looking at flights, looking at hotels, you know, looking at uh, time that can be blocked off um, to make the most of AxiCon. Um, it is going to be a three-day event. I know the 7th through 10th is four days. September 7th will be sort of a day zero uh, welcome. We're going to have some sort of like a welcome kind of barbecue outdoor party type thing where you'll be able to get your ticket, try to reduce that queue for day one uh, of people trying to enter the venue uh, and claim their access badges. So um, yeah, stay tuned for some of that stuff. But as Alex said, I'm very excited to take our first steps into the esports foray. Um, I think Origin will just be ready for some really great high-level testing from our 
our pro players. And um, yeah, this is the foundation that's that's going to set us up for the future. Uh, the website is now live, axicon.axiinfinity.com. That's going to be your base to find everything you need to know about this event. Uh, and the wait list for registration is now up. There's a button there, sign up for wait list, and you can register. And um, well, you'll be on the wait list for when ticket sales are made available. So if you're interested, if you want to reserve your spot, please head over to the website and get yourself reserved on the list. All right. Yeah. Okay. So is that it? Anything else? Jeff, anything else to add before we actually wrap this thing up? I, I think that was everything that we wanted to touch. Uh, I can't wait to hang out with you guys in person. And yeah, like, you know, we, we, let's keep building. Like, I, I think we've been on a, a little bit of a return to normalcy, actually, right? Like, where, you know, we had a really hard March and, and the rest of crypto was doing okay. But then now it's, it seems like we're actually kind of finding our groove and other projects are having maybe a harder time than us. So let's, I think we're racking up a string of small wins. Let's continue with, with these small victories. And yeah, like we need to keep building, right? And I, I know it's gonna be hard, right? Like I, we, I, I remember, right, we have that document with the with the snow saying like you know basically comparing this all the way back in 2020 to like a trip to antarctica or the arctic circle right <laughs> it's gonna be hard it's gonna be cold it's gonna be dark but if we win if we succeed here stakes are enormous right this is about yeah. as alex was saying this is about our owning our own identity if you don't own your identity you don't own yourself <laughs> what are you right like this is about freedom yeah. we have a chance right like I, one of my i think i saw this the other day where someone said right crypto isn't here to make you rich crypto is here to make you free right not to say that you can't make money but i think for me it's always been about freedom at the end of the day um, and more even more so than the monetary stuff for me when it, crypto was just about money it wasn't interesting to me i knew how to make money in different ways right they're they're less stressful ways to make money in my opinion in the universe than being involved in this but it, there aren't any more significant movements for this generation so yeah i feel blessed to be a part of this with each and every one of you yeah likewise very well said all right well it's time to wrap it up, folks. We're going to roll the video one more time for you to enjoy. I love these. They make me feel so good. They make me feel like the axes are real. Thank you so much, Psych Out. Thank you so much, Jiho. Uh, a lot more in the pipeline. Stay tuned, folks. We'll see you in Barcelona, September 7 through 10.